what the puck is going on in our world man burned by glowing rocks at Anna Maria Beach in Florida hazmat team responding my god a man is recovering after a walk on the beach turned into a trip to the hospital Manatee County Sheriff's deputies responded Wednesday to a suspicious fire at a beach near Willow Avenue and Gulf Drive on Anna Maria. Stay away from there, you guys, in Florida. When they arrived, they found an unknown metal object up in flames. Deputies and public works employees then come to the area for any additional debris and remove some material with a rake and shovel. The item that was on fire was taken by public works. Then a 28 year old male was walking on the same stretch of the beach when he observed what he said appeared to be glowing rocks. He collected some of the pieces and placed them in his pants pocket. The objects later, later, how long did it take for those glowing rocks to burn through his pocket, burning both his leg and hand. He was transported to the hospital where he is now in stable condition. The object that was on fire was identified as a military training flare. Apparently the rocks, the glowing rocks, have not been identified. But which one went to the hospital? These articles are written really poorly. And you know what? Um, The news outlets are reporting the exact same articles. Written exactly, they're just repeats. Interesting, isn't it? So, my first thought is, hmm, okay. Look, the writing of these articles, are it's really bad. So, a man is recovering after a walk on the beach turned into a trip to the hospital. Which man? Okay. Was it the first man that you're talking about? who saw a suspicious fire at a beach, or is it the man that you begin to discuss paragraphs later, this 28-year-old male who went to the hospital? Okay, it's the 28-year-old male, but, well, doesn't. You see, if you are not spotting how badly written these articles are, uh, I don't know what to tell you. But, all right, so, the military training flare somehow made its way to a beach in Anna Maria and it was still on fire and they collected more materials with a rake and shovel you don't know about those rake uh, about those materials that they collected but glowing rocks, would you pick up a glowing rock with your bare hair and hand, put it in your pocket? I wouldn't. Um, I would r be rather, hmm, suspicious of that glowing rock. I wouldn't touch it. But this 28-year-old male seemed to think that was fine. You know, reading these articles sometimes, about these strange things. People seeing strange things in the sky, glowing rocks on a beach. I just have to wonder if it's part of the alien agenda. And eventually they're going to come out and say, those glowing rocks, they were from another planet and aliens were throwing them down at human beings because they don't like us. So, uh, what else do we have? Total failure of governance. Island-wide blackout deepens Puerto Rico crisis. Okay, on Wednesday, yesterday, they had a complete island-wide blackout. It's the first since the storm struck last September, but apparently they have been having other blackouts. I guess not island-wide. They had one last week that left 843 thousand people in the dark this one was 
the entire island. 1.4 million customers were in the dark. What's happening? Oh, an excavator accidentally downed a transmission line. And now it could take 24 to 36 hours to fully restore power to more than 1.4 million customers. Oh, so downing one transmission line leaves the entire island in a blackout? Is there something wrong here? Either something is not reported quite right or the uh, energy companies on Puerto Rico really need to provide a little bit more protection of their electric grid, maybe? Maybe. A massive oil spill, welcome boost to economy. Really? BP, this posted on the 6th of April of this year. Coastal towns would enjoy an economic boon from a massive oil spill in the Great Australian Bight. BP claimed in newly revealed documents from a 2016 drilling bid, the oil giant said, any cleanup operation following a huge spill would bring a welcome boost to local economies. Hey, hey, Ooh. well, it's not only BP. Yeah, so this article, 2016, Washington, their State Energy Facility Site Evaluation Council held hearings on the matter of a proposed oil by rail terminal that could be built in Vancouver, 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 Washington. I don't know if it was built. That's not the point of the story. The point is that how is it that these oil people are claiming that an oil spill is good? And this, this uh, oil by rail would be handling some three 360,000 barrels of crude oil shipped by train every single day. Wow, nothing could go wrong there. But these people who testified at this hearing, they were from Tessera Corp and Savage, Savage companies. And it was the Tessero Savage terminal proposal oil spills might not actually be that bad for the environment. Okay. What do you, how deranged minds. The draft environmental impact statement identifies many economic impacts arising from an accident associated with project operations but it fails to recognize economic activity that would be generated by spill response. You know, all of those activities associated with the cleanup. People will have jobs and they'll make money. When a spill occurs, new economic activity occurs in cleanup contaminated areas, remediate affected properties and supply equipment for cleanup activities, anecdotal evidence from recent spills suggests that such activity can be potentially large. What the fuck? Yeah, Gregory Challenger, another guy that testified on behalf of Tessero Savage, he worked with Vancouver Energy to analyze potential impacts and responses in the event of a worst case discharge at the facility and along the rail line, told the committee that when oil spills cause the closure of certain fisheries or hunting seasons, it's the animals that benefit. An oil spill is not a good thing. A fishery close closure is a good thing. If you don't kill half a million fish and they all swim upstream and spawn, that's more fish than were estimated affected 
as adults, the responsible party is not going to get credit for that. By the way, I don't know what to say. Desperate arguments? Um, now, I know that people make desperate arguments when they know that what they are proposing is really not a good thing. But these are deranged, deranged arguments. These, these, the, the, how can people, how do you formulate in your mind that an oil spill could be good? See, this guy said 3,000 birds were affected by an oil spill, but 13,000 birds not getting shot by hunters because of the closed season. We don't get any credit for that, but it's hard to deny that it's good for birds to not be shot. Well, I am not uh, a person who supports hunting, but um, okay, so you have an oil spill, and in that area, people can't go. So hunting season closes, it, people are banned, they can't hunt, okay. So that's good for 13,000 birds. Not so good for the 3,000 birds affected by the oil, but those 13, well, they wouldn't have been shot by hunters. Okay, well, man, we can put a positive spin on anything. Feathers become matted with oil. A seabird loses its ability to regulate its temperature. Often it will try to preen itself to remove the oil, which only forces the oil into its internal organs, causing problems like diarrhea, kidney and liver damage, anemia. Oil can also enter into a seabird's lungs causing them respiratory problems, but it's good. It's all good. People will make money from all of those jobs to clean up the oil and uh, less birds will be shot. What do you think the people uh, in that hearing, what do you think, how do you think that they were kind of responding to this? Do you think that they were incredulous or... Okay, I don't know what to say anymore. Malfunctioning, realistic robot, indistinguishable from humans. The field test of Fred who was built by engineers from robotics company Engineered Arts. Who, this company recreated 3D scan details from a human being, 55-year-old Ted Roy Newell. They field tested this robot in a London pub. They had cameras, hidden cameras, and the robot struck up conversations with unsuspecting members of the public before crushing the glass as part of a stunt to promote Westworld. Which one is Fred? Fred. Human. Fred. Robot. Can you tell? Okay. Watching this video, which is no longer on this, uh, on this page, I'm sure you can just type in the search bar on YouTube, Fred. Robot. I'm sure it'll come up. Okay. I watched the video and I could tell that this robot, Fred, was a robot. But I have no doubt they have robots walking among us. They've got the technology now to create humanoids indistinguishable from humans. They used real skin, 
real hair and it's got a computer in its skull. Now, what could possibly go wrong here? Well, AI. AI could take over the world. It could use humans as pets. It can steal jobs. They could go rogue and start killing us. They could wipe out humanity. But at this point with our what the puck world, I have to wonder, maybe it's a good thing because we humans are not quite right. Over 8 million U.S. children now on psychiatric drugs. Enough said. But seven Prince George County elementary students cut wrists at school. When the news of this came out, parents who were not the parents of these seven elementary students who cut their wrists, they were outraged that they were notified. That's why we're hearing about these seven elementary students who who used blades from pencil sharpeners. All seven students were seen by the school nurse. None of the children were taken to the hospital. The cuts were not bad. School counselors were brought in to speak with the students. And officials announced a ban on pencil sharpeners at the school. Yay! That's how the other parents found out because they sent letters out to the parents were banning pencil sharpeners. Okay, okay, something is very wrong. Something is very wrong with adults who put children on dangerous psychiatric medications. Yeah, and they even put infants on mind-altering drugs. And many of these psychiatric medications actually cause suicidal ideation. Will we hear if these students were on psychiatric medications? But when I read stories like this, I have to, well, I do have to wonder, first of all, what am I reading? Is it fake news or is it real? But then I think about the world that has manifested for these kids. And I know that teenage suicide is sharply rising. What do they have? They have virtually none of the opportunities that we had growing up. They live in a world that is so profoundly sick and evil. They live amongst lies. And children know adults are lying. And they must, even if they can't articulate it yet in their brain, they must be sensing that I came into this world and I have no idea what the hell it is. Empty, everybody just superficial, and money, 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 money is really all that matters. It is heartbreaking to realize what we have left these kids. So, Kentucky governor apologizes, apologizes for saying teachers strike left children vulnerable to harm sexual assault and drugs. No joke. And you can uh, let's just listen to a few minutes of this because it's really pathetic. It's so scary, so scary to realize that, well, first of all, what you will hear is a really deranged mind, but this is the leader of Kentucky. It's sad to realize that this guy could have said what he said and those in Kentucky haven't removed him from office right now, immediately get going.
but here. But that was left at home because there was nobody there to watch them. I guarantee you somewhere today, a child was physically harmed or ingested poison because they were home alone, because a single parent didn't have any money to take care of them. I'm offended by the idea that people so cavalierly and so flippantly disregarded what's truly best for children. You know how many children live in, in urban communities and rural communities where there's a single parent who literally, if they could afford to skip work and not lose their job, they couldn't afford to because they need the money. They don't have a backup for them. They don't get paid whether they go to work or not. They don't have an option. And some of them were given literally a matter of hours. So you know for a fact that there were hundreds of thousands of children who were left unattended, and some of them in communities where people knew that for a fact and took advantage of it. And as surely as we're wow. having this conversation, children were harmed, some physically, some sexually, some were introduced to drugs for the first time. Wow. Okay. So teachers striking in Kentucky are responsible for children who, and he said it, as surely as I'm speaking, children are being sexually abused and, uh, I don't know, given drugs or whatever. Uh, okay. So the teachers striking, well, we all know that teachers across this country are paid such crap salaries that they can barely make ends meet and that's why so many teachers are leaving the teaching profession um, so they finally have had it and they strike and this governor comes out and says y you've done this cavalierly and you clearly don't care about those kids because you you've left them to be Abuse, it's the teacher's responsibility to protect children from abuse. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? And then he said, even if those parents could afford to take a day off, then he then very quickly says, but you know, they couldn't take the day off because they can't afford it. This is your governor. This is your quote unquote leader. Something is very wrong here. I don't care if he apologizes after the fact. What he is saying right here exposes a very deranged, warped mind. And governor, if you did anything to help those teachers, then they wouldn't have to strike. Oh, right, and if we didn't have this economy that was artificially propped up. Oh, and uh, well, Bill Gates warns of another financial crash as bad as the Great Recession in 2008. We know that our economy is propped up. We know that our local, state, and federal government steal our taxes. And we know that the economy is being deliberately steered by the Federal Reserve, by the bankers, uh, by the Treasury Department. Oh, that Treasury Department, the secretaries, Goldman Sachs. Oh, and the last one, Goldman Sachs. Oh, and then that other one, uh, what was his name, Paulson, who held a gun, figuratively speaking, but essentially held a gun to everybody's head and said, give me six billion dollars. Or this economy is going to crash. Even worse than it's crashed. And then you fork it over. Hey, okay, six billion. Goldman Sachs. So, <laughs> you think this Kentucky governor doesn't realize that? People are being dis deliberately destroyed. The rules, the regulations, that now it costs thousands of dollars even for somebody to wash hair in many states in a beauty salon yeah they have to go to school they've got to get the permits they have to spend like three thousand dollars on tuition to wash hair
but the teachers now uh, some are starting at 28,000 so many teachers will never see their pension I mean Americans wake up you don't need leaders you do not need leaders you've got to become your own leader in order to take control over your life and if you don't you have these what the pucks controlling your life and then when you stand up and try to fight for something a little oh uh, how do you say it? to get out of that slave labor you know the slave payment you want a little bit more of a slave payment when you stand up you get shot down it's amazing how this guy could have claimed that teachers are responsible not the adults who do the sexual abuse to these children or hand them drugs. No, it's the teachers who are standing up for themselves. And frankly, what those teachers do is they provide a power of example to these kids. Oh, this is what you do when you're treated horribly. You stand up for yourself. God. And our economy is not doing well. Central Florida, 8,000 people inquired about 201 apartments. This just reflects that our economy is doing really poorly. And no, it's not just those who work in factories or manufacturing. It's teachers who have a whole lot of difficulty paying their bills today. It's everybody having difficulty paying their bills because these people increase your taxes and make it very hard for you to work with all of their rules and regulations that they impose upon you. This is not just in Central Florida. It's happening all across the board, everywhere in our country. So many people can't even afford rent or pay their bills. So you can look forward to another crash. When it will be, well, the power that bees will decide when they pull the plug on this artificial economy. Trump supporters, how much has he increased our debt? We have to begin to get in touch with the power within our own self and stop, stop relying on these sick, uh, people who are ruining us, ruining us, all laser.